what was it that was so great and still is so great about radio? Well, for one thing, it involves us in a special way. I think perhaps we didn't appreciate the nature of that participation until television came along. And we found ourselves no longer involved as listeners. We were now viewers. TV lays it all out for us, and therefore imagination is unemployed because eyes and ears take over. I think Hal Cantor summed it up in quite an interesting way when he said, radio is the theater of the mind, as opposed to television, the theater of the mindless. <laughs> when we only listened, our minds filled in the details, picked our own camera angles, made our own costumes, and cast our own actors. Whether it was high drama, a children's program, or soap opera, no matter what we heard, we saw what we wanted. And the mind is often kinder than the eye. When last we left Madeline, she was trapped in the Baron de Fitzroy's palatial mansion. The evil aristocrat is keeping her hostage until she agrees to divorce her third husband and become his fifth wife. <laughs> to make sure Madeline does not escape, he has her guarded. But now, as we descend to the wine cellar, Madeline can take no more. You think you can keep me here, do you? Yes. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> no wine cellar will keep me prisoner. And as for you, you dog, take that. <laughs> Meanwhile, upstairs, the evil Baron de Fitzroy plots with his housekeeper. Madame Rochard, at the stroke of midnight, you will visit the wine cellar. Bring me a quart of Burgundy and all of Madeline. Yeah, this is good, Herr Baron. But what will we do with the baby? The baby? Where is the baby now? In the upstairs guest room. Bring the baby to me. Yeah, Herr Baron. This hurt my Radio was enticing to young writers in those days, and among the enticees were kids named Irwin Shaw and Arthur Miller, Ranald McDougall, who wrote Man Behind the Gun, Rod Serling, the same Rod who burgeoned in television, Phillips Lord, who was responsible for the series Gangbusters, and Goody Ace, who wrote and played in the delightful Easy Aces. Also under this roof tonight is a multi-talented gentleman who not only acted in many of those uh, scripts, but, uh, and I'm glad to say, uh, proud to say that uh, he was in some of my own, but he also wrote, produced, and directed a great many of his own. The radio voice of Frank Rimley on the Phil Harris Show and the star of a thousand dramas, Elliot Lewis.